settlements. The interaction between human beings and nature has resulted in the development of the human environment. The industrial revolution accelerated the growth and spread of human civilization. Thus, settlements grew from tiny hamlets to villages, towns and cities as communities began to set aside areas for work, worship, administration and recreation. Along with food and clothing, shelter is a basic need of humans. Shelter leads to the growth of settlements. A settlement is defined as an organized group of human habitation where people build their houses to live in. Inhabited more or less permanently, settlements may vary in size from a small dwelling to a cluster of houses and even to an organized unit of many dwellings with well-developed and planned amenities and facilities. Whether large or small, urban or rural, all settlements basically reflect the value system of the people who reside in the area, the political structure of the society, as well as the various kinds of economic activities practiced by the residents. Selection of a place for a settlement, its growth and evolution are influenced by a number of factors like the topography of the region, availability of water, fertile soil, favorable climate, trade potential, etc. Depending on their shape, size, pattern, site, function, etc., settlements are classified in various ways. However, the main economic activity of the people is perhaps the most convenient way of classification. Therefore, rural and urban settlements are the two main types of settlements. The settlement is said to be rural when the economy is based on any form of primary activity like agriculture, fishing and livestock rearing. Rural settlements may vary in size from an isolated dwelling located in the mountains to numerous villages around fertile agricultural land in the plains. A village, however, has limited facilities in terms of infrastructure like healthcare centers, education centers, markets, etc. On the other hand, the settlement is said to be urban when secondary activities like industries and tertiary services like banking or trade comprise the main occupations of the people. Infrastructure and civic amenities in terms of transport and communication, medical and educational facilities are better developed in urban areas. Settlements may also be classified according to the stage of development. A settlement may begin as an isolated farmhouse and thereafter, when a few more houses come up, it may form a hamlet. This then grows into a village as more dwellings gather around it. When certain well-situated villages acquire a large size and better services and facilities, they grow into towns. Many towns over a period of time develop into cities which are identified by denser settlements and very good civic and administrative facilities. When a city becomes extremely large, it acquires the status of a metropolis. Rural Settlements In countries such as India, a vast number of people reside in rural areas and practice agriculture, fishing, livestock, rearing and other primary activities that form the base of our economic structure. Cottage industries, based upon the local raw materials, are an integral feature of rural settlements. In rural areas, the population is usually small and the density of population is low. The climate and prevailing environment play a very important role in building the settlements in rural areas. In flood-prone areas, for instance, houses are built on stilts with a view to providing protection against flooding. The numbers of houses are few and the post office, dispensary, primary school, etc. form an integral part of the basic amenities and services. Patterns of Rural Settlements Rural settlements have five basic patterns or shapes, linear, circular, dispersed, nucleated and radial. 
linear pattern. It refers to those settlements that develop along a landform or human structure with linear feature such as a river, road, railway track, canal or coastline in an elongated and narrow form. Circular pattern These settlements built according to this pattern usually develop in a circular shape around a water body like a tank, lake, pond, oasis etc. Dispersed pattern a settlement that follows this pattern is also known as a scattered settlement. This pattern comprises isolated dwellings or houses clustered and scattered over a large area. They are usually found in forested regions, hilly areas, deserted or areas which are not easily accessible. Nucleated pattern the settlements built according to this pattern are compact and agglomerated. Moreover, they are located close together, often clustered around. Radial pattern When a settlement comes up along roads and lanes diverging in all directions from a central point, the form of the settlement tends to be radial. As a result, a star-like pattern comes into existence wherein the flow of traffic becomes easy. Urban settlements Urban settlements may be huge in size compared to rural settlements. These are characterized by a plethora of services and amenities such as education, health care, banks, shopping, etc. Building materials like cement, iron, bricks and stone are extensively used irrespective of the environmental conditions. Urban settlements are generally classified on the basis of the economic activities they perform. Patterns of Urban Settlements Administrative towns serve as centers of administration and governance or national and state capitals. Example, New Delhi, Washington, D.C., Madrid, Beijing, Bengaluru, etc. Market or trading towns evolve and flourish as centers of buying and selling as well as distribution of agricultural and industrial produce. Example, Winnipeg, Canada, Kabul, Afghanistan. Defense towns cater to the security and defense of a region such as Mo, India, Pathan Code, India, Halifax, Canada, Munster, Germany. Mining towns are centered in areas which are rich in mineral deposits such as Kundremuk, India, Kalgoorlie, Australia, Yellowknife, Canada, etc. Industrial towns serve as centers of industrial activity and automatically attract people for employment and associated activities. Jamshedpur, India, Pittsburgh, USA and Lancashire, UK are some examples of these towns. Collection centers include mining towns, lumbering centers and fishing ports etc. where raw materials are obtained and refined to a certain extent. Industries may also exist in such areas for example Mangalore, India, Grand Falls, a timber town in Canada etc. Cultural and educational centers are famous for their cultural significance and promotion of art, culture and education. Shanti Niketan, India, Akadem Grodog, Russia and Cambridge, UK are examples of educational towns while Heidelberg, Germany and Leiden, Netherlands are cultural centers. Religious towns develop around religious Shrines or places of pilgrimage such as Benares, India, Laos, France, Jerusalem, Israel, Lhasa, Tibet, etc. Port towns on the coast may come up where a natural harbor exists. These include towns like Kolkata, Singapore, Mumbai, London, etc. Residential towns refer to the suburbs and small towns which serve as the residence of a large population like Chandigarh, Salt Lake City, India. Resort towns cater to the recreational need of the people and are famous centers of tourist attraction. For instance, St. Moritz, Switzerland, Darjeeling, India, Nanital, India, Uti, India, etc. 
In spite of the above classification, it is important to understand that settlements are essentially dynamic in nature. They keep changing their size, shape and form over a period of time. Usually, they modify or add on to their functions as they grow and develop. Economic specialities may change to fulfill the needs and aspirations of the people. Hence, villages may grow into towns and towns into cities. Urban-rural interdependence A considerable degree of interdependence exists between urban and rural areas since villages supply food grains, industrial and agricultural raw materials and labor force to cities and towns. The towns and cities, on the other hand, supply industrial goods, health care facilities, education and most importantly, employment opportunities for people in rural areas. Therefore, a complementary relationship exists between villages and cities wherein both benefit each other.